All right guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to do a video on the Focus. The truck is outside right now and I've been wanting to do more videos on the Focus because it doesn't get quite enough love. And today's video is basically an overall review on the Focus. I have a 2016 Focus ST with the ST3 package. And I'm gonna be going over sort of all the pros, the cons, um, everything I've kind of experienced while owning this car so far. So like I said, this is a 2016 Focus ST. I've had it for about three and a half years. I bought it with 55,000 miles on it for about 16,800 USD, and it now has 110,000 miles on it. It's been a great car, um, it honestly has. And a lot of guys will shit on these cars um, for their like engine problems because they suffer from LSPI, which all turbocharged direct engines do, um, especially the smaller displacement ones. So basically what that means is uh, LSPI is low speed pre-ignition, so you get premature, premature detonation in your engine because you're going at too slow a speed and you're asking too much of a demand out of your engine. You're, you're at a, let's say, let's say you're going 20, 20 kilometers an hour, 20 miles per hour, whatever, and you're in the wrong gear, you're in a fourth gear and you're trying to get into it, you're at too low of an RPM and you're demanding too much out of your car and then you grenade your engine. So basically, this car likes to be shifted at the higher RPMs, it's happier there, don't be in a low RPM uh, while you know having your foot into the gas and just totally lugging your engine and bogging down your engine because that's where these issues come from. So the issues with this car are because of shitty drivers. Plain and simple. I know things do happen and there are lemons out there and, and, and you know, but if you stay on top of your maintenance and you drive this car like it's supposed to be driven, I'm not saying you can't drive it hard, but you gotta drive it right. So look up LSPI to have a better understanding of it. Um, I gave you a pretty dumbed down version of it and it probably wasn't even good at that. But low speeds just don't, don't get into your engine unless you're in a higher RPM. Like I said, I've just done the bare minimum, basic maintenance, spark plugs, oil changes, that kind of stuff. And uh, this car has been very, very happy. So getting onto the inside here, I got the ST3 package. And uh, this comes with the nice uh, Recaro leather racing seats that are quite heavily bolstered. I'm 5'10", 190 pounds, and uh, fit very comfortably in these seats. So you get the nice stitching of the ST on the back here. And uh, Getting in is not a problem at all for me, and I got lots of room. I mean, I can put the seat quite far back, like very far back. So, I mean, if you're over six feet, this car should not be an issue for you. And you can go, if you're five, four, this car won't be an issue for you either. So you got lots of uh, adjustment, and you also have uh, lots of headroom as well. So this car has quite a bit of headroom. If you're on the taller side, you don't, you don't have to worry about, like I could put a whole fist underneath my head here basically. Um, so you don't have to worry about that if you're on the taller side. This car seems to be very versatile for people of all different sizes. So getting into it here, my battery is dead. This car has been sitting here for, for most of the winter, but I want to do, do a review video for a while and I finally found the time. Um, so unfortunately, I can't really start it. Well, it won't really start up. This will die out right away. So there's the nav. Oh, I think it just died. So here's kind of what the gauge cluster looks like. You have your no, turbo, oh, oil change required oh, and replace the battery on my fob. Um, but I have my gauges up here. So I'm from Canada. I got the bar instead of the PSI that you guys may be used to seeing. Um, I often talk with US measurements and units um, just because the general population of people that watch my channel are from the States. So I try to make it um, as easy for you guys to understand. And um, just so it spares you guys from having to try to do all the conversions on your own. So if I do say something in kilometers or Canadian dollars, I, it's sometimes hard to juggle that all in your mind, but I'll try my best to do kind of the conversions on the fly and then we'll kind of go from there. So quite a nice interior here. I know a lot of people kind of shit on these cars. Um, I don't know. Facebook forums are just cancer. If you're looking to buy one of these cars and you guys are kind of going through the Facebook forums, they're a bunch of losers. They're so negative all the time. I, I, I don't like it. These, this is a great little car and I'll be honest with you, I'll get that out of the way first. This has been a great car. I've put um, a lot of mileage on this car and it hasn't had a single issue and it hasn't skipped a beat. So you guys can see right there, 178,000 kilometers, which is about 110,000 uh, miles. So, and I got this car with 90,000 kilometers, give or take, which is about 55,000 miles. And it's been a great car. I hammer on this car quite often and it hasn't had any issues yet. But getting back to the interior, um, this has a very nice like 
uh, like a, it's almost like a rubber, like a very rubberized plastic. So it's pretty heavy duty. Um, probably not good for the, you know, the weight reduction that you may want in a sports car, but at least it's not cheap on the cheap side either. It feels very nice. It's a nice heavy plastic. Oop, did not mean to do that. Um, oh goodness. Uh, it comes all the way down here and on this side as well. And then I got the carbon fiber ST, the, this package that came with the ST3. Um, you get the carbon fiber trim on, that looked a little bit weird. Um, you get the carbon fiber trim on the shift knob, um, up on your gauge cluster there, along your door trims there and there, as well as your uh, e-brake right here has the, the carbon fiber. Um, other than that, this car has a heated steering wheel, heated seats, your touchscreen, which has nav and all that kind of stuff, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and then your typical gauge cluster here that shows your, you can do your fuel economy. I just have the, the readout of my speed as well as a typical RPM gauge, which some vehicles are kind of going away from that. So it's nice to, I mean, this is an older car, but some of the newer ones with the electric dash kind of seem to be going away from the RPM gauge. Um, but it's got the speedometer. And like I said, it's showing 270 kilometers an hour. It's not miles, you guys. And uh, another nice feature about this car is the ambient lighting. So this car has, my battery's so dead, I don't even know if it'll work here. I'll try here, let me just turn off this. There we go, it came on. So we got the ambient lighting under here. The button's up here, all right there. You can change your brightness of your ambient lighting um, and that's how you change the color. So you got your green, your orange, red, your purple, your white, your teal, and then back to your blue. So this car is pretty fully loaded with some very nice features. It has the Sony surround sound system. Man, that beep is brutal. <clears throat> it has the Sony surround sound system. So it's got the speakers there. It's got the door speakers down there and like a little tweeter up there. And then you got the subwoofer in the back. Now this isn't a mind blowing sound system by any means, but it is a premium system. It sounds really good. It has a nice little bit of bass. Overall, it's a very high quality system, just not a very overly loud system if you want to draw attention to yourself by just blasting a subwoofer out here. So here's the speaker. And there's a little tweeter I was talking about. The car also comes with uh, this car with a sunroof. And I've done a lot of little tiny mods myself. I've done this, this decal to kind of give the spoiler a little bit more profile. I've done the wheels. I've got the 1552 Gold Tarmax. Uh, huge fan of these wheels ever since watching Ken Block's Gymkhana. And uh, he ran these on his Fiesta. Obviously not the same wheel. His were probably more of a stronger metal, so they're not gonna break under that high torque and all that kind of stuff, but he had white ones on his Fiesta, and I really liked them, I thought they looked sick, so. I was gonna get the white for this car, but I saw other cars with the white Tarmax, and the colors looked off, like it, the white didn't match the white. The Tarmax almost looked more like a bluey white, so under certain lights and stuff like that, it just looked really off, in my opinion, so I wanted, I didn't wanna do black, so I, cause then you wouldn't really be able to see the, the design of it, so I went with the gold ones. And gold contrasts really well with white. So very happy with these wheels. Um, and some mods I'm looking to do in the future are coilovers, intercooler, exhaust. I'm gonna be doing an intake and eventually a tune. So stick around for that. The one problem with this car that I had, actually there's a couple I'll point those out right away, is it's not a flex fuel. So you can't run E85 or E30 in this car. You have to get a um, auxiliary fuel system, unfortunately. So you just gotta run premium octane with a tune and then you're starting, to map, you're starting to kind of cap your power at that point. So these cars can get to about 300 wheel horsepower, um, depending on kind of where you live and, and your air quality plays a factor too. But you get these to about 300 wheel horsepower with basic bolt-ons and a good tune uh, before having to do an auxiliary fuel system and, and a big turbo and all that kind of stuff. So one big problem with this car that I'll point out is right here. <clears throat> and anyone that has a Focus ST that's watching this video, you'll know what I'm talking about this stuff right here. So for some reason, every Focus, whether it's the Focus RS, ST, they all chips here. The paint chips away here where it meets the, this is plastic. So wherever it meets the plastic, this all chips away here. And then you get surface rust and it looks like shit. So if you're buying a Focus, keep an eye on this, make sure it's not bad. And maybe if someone already repaired it as a bonus for you, um, but make sure that you know the, there isn't any significant rust damage. So this is an area for sure to pay attention to, um, as well as kind of right here. So there's obviously just shitty paint on the wheel liners here. 
and just poor engineering kind of right in this area here. It's a little bit worse on this side. Um, not so much this part here, which is still kind of shitty, um, but down here is very bad for, chip, for my chipping. So that sucks and that's the one problem with this car that I've found so far. But overall, you guys, uh, very, very good car. <clears throat> so coming into the engine bay here, just there's not a whole lot going on in here yet. I got the green filter, but this came from the previous owner and I'm actually due for a new one. Sorry, my camera's a little bit out of focus there. So this is the green filter and I'm gonna need a new filter soon. I got the GFB, GVX, the go, go fast bits, uh, diverter hybrid valve, which is hiding down there somewhere. You have to access it through the wheel. I have an install video on that. And that's basically a blow off valve for this car. So I get the nice turbo noises um, when I'm shifting and all that kind of good stuff. So I went for fun noises before I kind of went for performance um, because I'm kind of happy right now where the performance of this car is at. So I've done a resonator delete and then that just to get a nice little growl out of the exhaust and then those turbo noises on top of that. So I do have an install video. So go check that out if you want. But not a whole lot going on in the engine bay here, you guys. Uh, lots of room to work. It's pretty easy to do all your general maintenance on this car. You got your battery, your, your positives here, and you got your negative right here. So very easy to kind of access that if you ever need to boost it. And I'll be throwing the Chicle Charger on it tonight because I want to do some stuff tomorrow on it. So I'm um, just taking off this cover here. That's kind of what the engine looks like. And EcoBoost engines are very prevalent. They're everywhere. Um, so if you blow the engine out of this one, just put another two liter in there, whether it's from an escape and edge and all that kind of stuff, they're easy to find. Um, spark plugs all right here. So your general maintenance is, is quite easy to stay on top of. <clears throat> That's basically it. There's not really much more under here to talk about because I haven't done a whole lot under here. This car comes with the stock um, projector headlights. I'm not too sure if these are LED or HID. Um, but regardless, they're a, a white light, more or less. I'm pretty sure they're just LED, but I could be really wrong because my 2014 F-150 had HIDs in the projector. So I'm not too sure, but regardless, they're quite nice. And if I open the door here, I believe, because my battery's kind of dead, this should work. You have the nice eyebrow there. So it gives it kind of that nice um, aggressive kind of look. I have yellow fog lights that I'm gonna be putting in uh, to the car and I'll be doing that shortly. I might just do it as a YouTube short instead of a full video because it doesn't really require a full video to do this. So stay tuned for that. Um, I kind of went over everything I think I should. So if you guys have any, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask in the comment section below anything I may have missed, anything that's pretty obvious, but I feel like I kind of hit all of the main things. Um, fast car, it's fun, it's reliable if you know how to drive. Um, all that good stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, <clears throat> make sure to like and subscribe. That goes a really long way for the channel. And uh, if not, I just appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will be doing a drive in review. I just, like I said, I don't have the mount and all that good stuff. So once I get that set up, we'll do a, an in, in car review. And we'll go ripping around. And as you guys kind of hear the blow off valve and the exhaust and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but for now we'll keep it kind of short and sweet with just the in garage review. And uh, thank you guys for being here.